Join me on our theme chorus, I'm on the winning side. Side say amen. Yeah. Well, that's good. I'm glad to see you. Isn't it beautiful outside? It's just beautiful out there. Yesterday was a beautiful day. Talking for some of the, talking to some of the folks we have here. We have uh, several folks from Ohio here today, and uh, I said the terrible weather. It's terrible up there. I know my, uh, my brothers up there in Michigan. They're suffering up there. My brother Doug should be. He's going to dig himself out of the snow and come down here. I think another. When's he coming? Another week or so? This week? Tuesday night. She, she knows more about it than I do. He wants to come down here from digging their snow out up there. I'm sure last year they spent thousands of dollars just clearing their parking lot out there, out there in Saginaw. Thousands and thousands. So, well, we don't have to do that here, amen? <laughs> Hey, ushers, get the snow plows out. No. My brother Tim was here on Wednesday night, said that they had to just, uh, they actually had canceled, uh, had canceled their services. In fact, last Wednesday night when Tim, my brother Tim was here, he lives in Lansing, Michigan, preached for us. He had a preacher that was scheduled to preach for him. Both him and his son were here on Wednesday night, who's assistant pastor, and he had this guy coming from the north, northern uh, Michigan to come and preach for him and while we were sitting up here before he got ready to preach he said oh, the guy couldn't make it because of the snow and so uh, he had to have one of his deacons preach that night deacons are you ready <laughs> some of them just shot out the door back there oh well Praise the Lord. Well, we're glad to have you here with us today. We have lots of folks gone as President's Weekend, but we're glad to have you here uh, with us today. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we're grateful to be here in the house of God. We're thankful that, Father, uh, for the great weather that you've given to us. We're thankful for the folks that are here. Father, thank you for the folks that are visiting with us today. Pray, Father, that they would be blessed by being here in the house of God today. Be with our many families, Father, that are traveling. Uh, uh, through the weekend, we have families that are still ill from the flu and colds and so forth. Uh, and we pray that you would raise them up and heal them, bring them back to be with us. Now, bless in the service today, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
hymnals, number 268, 268. There is power in the blood of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We know that's true because he changed us. Amen. And he gave us a new life and he gave us a purpose and we have heaven and all that too. Let's stand together as we sing the first and last stanzas. There's power in the blood. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's a wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Read those about you.
me on that chorus, would you? Is he Lord of your life? He is Lord, he is Lord. He is risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Aren't you glad you already bowed to him and he's your Savior? Amen. It's not a good day for those that will bow to him and he's not their savior. Let's sing it again with that rejoicing in our heart that we belong to him. Would you sing it with me? He is Lord, he is Lord. He is arisen from the dead and he is Lord. Let's sing it now. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The yes, usher's going to come receive the offering in just a moment. Before they do, let me mention several of our missionary letters that have come in. If, you, if you'd like to read these letters in their entirety, you can just go down our out of the foyer, down the hallway out there. We have all of our missionaries. We have a little uh, uh, place where you can read the letters you can read them in their entirety also our map out there shows you where our missionaries are located we have missionaries all the way around the world we have missionaries and uh, that are in over 200 countries we support missions in over 200 countries here at Liberty Baptist Church uh, Louise Chap Chaplin her son was here with us last year and uh, her husband went home to be with the Lord and but she's still on still there uh, serving the Lord and uh, in Suriname, South America. She is going to be turning, this year she'll be turning 90 years old. She's still there Amen. and still serving the Lord. You know, in this letter, you can see this letter at the bottom, at the bottom of the letter, it just uh, brought tears to my eyes. She talks about going to be 90 years old. And she said, uh, should promotion at any time be part of his path for me? She said, I earnestly pray that you, dear supporting friends, pastors, and churches, will go right on investing in this ministry simply by changing my name, Louise, to one of my son's names. <laughs> That's sweet. Her dear husband went home to heaven. He was buried right there. He said, I'm going to be buried right here in the field. And he was. Did a great work for the Lord for many, many, many years. We praise the Lord for them. The Skelton family, missionaries to Hong Kong, they're back there. And uh, he's taken over this gateway uh, Baptist church. And uh, they're doing a work there. He's struggling to learn the, the Chinese language there as well. Uh, but he performed... This is a big deal. It might not seem like a big deal to you, but it's a big deal. He performed his first baptism there. And so we praise the Lord for him. And they were here with us last year, too, the Skelton family. Then uh, we have uh, our new missionaries. We just took this family on in uh, November. The, the Elliott family, they're missionaries to South Korea. They're back there in, in South Korea. And they're talking about they passed out thousands of tracts and uh, they've been passing out tracts, inviting people to come and doing a great work. Great. Uh, just a great family. Weren't they a great family? Just a wonderful family. We praise the Lord that we took them on for support. And then Jeremy Rowland with Baptist Church Planting Ministries. And uh, he grew up right here in our church and uh, got married here, got ordained here. And uh, praise the Lord uh, for the work that he's doing. He's got... In this letter I just got this week, he's uh, got six churches they're going to be planting in 2019. And they have some others they're working on. They've got a church, they're going to plant one. In fact, they're, they're starting today. In Phoenix, Arizona, they're planting a church there. In um, March, they're planting one. Now, this is a, a far way to drive in Italy. That's a, that's a long drive. Then, in, then also on the last of March in Dayton, Ohio, some of you folks, they're going to be starting a new church there in Dayton, Ohio. In May, uh, Shrewsbury, Maine, 
in September. They're going to Sarnia, Ontario. Do we have any Canadians here with us today? Sometimes we do. Then we have, then, uh, then in October, Leewood, Kansas. So he's got a number of churches that are going to be starting. And uh, praise the Lord for the work of Jeremy and his dear wife. Some of you probably don't even know, but Jeremy's mom still goes to our church. She's the one that's got the biggest smile on her face back there. Debbie, raise your hand. There she is right there. That's, they didn't see your hand. Raise it up again, faster. There you go. Hold it there. Okay. But uh, praise the Lord and uh, for the work that Jeremy's doing. Whoever thought that when he just uh, got saved here, amen, that uh, God would use him to plant churches not only here in America but all around the world. Isn't that something? Right from our church. Isn't that great? Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Brother Dave Smeltz, why don't you come up here and lead us in a word of prayer, brother. This is our, one of our missionaries and evangelists, and we're glad for him. Taught Sunday, a Sunday school class this morning and uh, traveling all over. He travels all over the world, too. We're just glad to have him around. Amen. Brother, lead us in a word of prayer, would you? Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Appreciate all of you being here today. Uh, God is so good, isn't he? He's so good. Let's pray. Lord, we love you this morning with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. You're everything. You're our strength. You're our source of power. You're our guidance. You're our wisdom. Lord, you're everything. Without you, we are nothing. And Father, I pray today, Lord God, that everyone that is here would be able to see and hear through the word of God how much you love them. There may be someone here this morning, God, that's, that's really hurting. Could be all kinds of different things taking place in their life. But God, you just want to wrap your arms around them and tell them I love you. Nothing's too big for God to do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And I bless this morning and preacher as he pre brings the word of God. Be with this offering, Father. Think about all the missionaries that this church is supporting. Lord, they depend upon this church and many other churches. I know as we do. And God, thank you for this, this church and thank you for this pastor. And thank you for these, pre these precious people who, who give every week, sacrifice to meet the needs of the church and meet the needs of missionaries around the world. Bless this offering, please, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Special music and message this morning. Let's sing a
One more song, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, page 158 in your hymnal. Remain seated as we sing. Think about the words. Be ready for the message this morning. Let's prepare our hearts as we think about what the Lord has done for us. When I survey Take your Bible, turn with me to the book of First Peter, if you will. First Peter, chapter three. I've extended, I was preaching encouraging messages through the month of January, and I'm continuing that through the month of February. The series in the book of Ephesians, what I'm gonna probably do with that is preach that on finish that up on Sunday nights. I am preaching uh, the book of Revelation on Sunday nights, and uh, we're looking at the final judgment, the last judgment. I have three parts to that, and after that, then I'll probably go on, preach, uh, finish the book of Ephesians. Uh, the book of Ephesians 
we're in that part where it deals with uh, the family, the husband, the wife, the children, and then uh, spiritual warfare that we're in. We're going to be talking about those things. I'll be preaching on that on Sunday night. Finish that series up and help uh, with uh, these messages on Sunday morning. Try to encourage the hearts of the people in First Peter chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. If you could stand with me, go ahead and stand uh, today. Let me just read these two verses. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Bad days can be good days. <laughs> Bad days can be good days. Here we have some conditions. There are four conditions in these two verses, how you can turn your bad days into good days. And I'm not even going to ask if you ever have a bad day, because you do. But this passage really tells us how we can turn those bad days into good days. And so I want to share that with you this morning in just a moment. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, I pray that you would bless preaching of the Word of God today. I pray that the Word of God would sink into our hearts and minds. And Father, I pray that it would change us. That, dear Lord, every day can be a good day with the Lord. And I pray that you would help us to understand that. And Father, I just pray for uh, your help this morning. There may be one here today that doesn't know Christ as their Savior. They don't even know what we're talking about when we talk about having a truly good day. And dear Lord, uh, they've, if they've never experienced salvation, they don't understand it. But dear Lord, I pray that they would come to know Christ as their Savior, even this very hour, that they would understand it for the first time. Then, Father, for Christians, I pray that they would be strengthened in the Word of God. We would know where to go when we need help it's from the Word of God. Now, bless the preaching, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Man got up one day. He was late. Alarm clock didn't go off, slept in. It had a long day before, and he slept. And uh, he was asleep. He got up late for work, jumped out of bed, ran into the bathroom, began to shave. And as he was shaving, he cut himself several times. And uh, then he jumped into the shower, and uh, there was no hot water. And uh, so he took a cold shower, got, uh, went into, the, into his uh, room to change and to get ready for work, and he didn't have a clean shirt. He put on his dirty shirt from the day before. His wife was still in bed. He ran downstairs to get a bite to eat. He thought, well, I'll have some toast. So he uh, put some toast, he put some bread in the toaster and began to toast the bread and burnt it. And then uh, he had some coffee, and the coffee was hot. He burnt his tongue, spilled coffee down his tie, and uh, ran out to the car to, to get to work. And... Uh, Got his briefcase, ran back in the house, got his briefcase, ran back out to the car, tried to start the car, and the battery was dead. Now, after that, everything began to go downhill. <laughs> you say, I know those days. I've had that before. <laughs> That's happened to me before. Now, your bad days can be good days. Bad days can be good days. When we say good days, I'm not saying that you won't ever have any trouble anymore. You won't ever have any problems anymore. There are those prosperity preachers that get on the radio and get on the TV, and they say if you'll uh, listen to what they have to say, that you, you'll, it'll only be prosperous. And, and in our Sunday school class today, we were talking about some of those prosperity preachers. They get on there, and, and uh, they talk like uh, you'll never have any problems ever again if you get saved. And we know that if you've been saved, you know you still have problems. Amen? But we know that the Lord is sovereign. The Lord is in control. We know that. Amen? So, uh, first of all, to say that you can have good days, we're not talking about that you'll never have any problems ever again. We're not talking about that at all. What we're saying is that... Uh, you can know the presence of the Lord, amen? And you can have answer to prayer. And uh, we, it, it means that uh, God will give you peace in spite of your problems. You can still have peace. So we know that. That's what we mean when we say your bad days can be good days. Now look at this passage with me uh, today. It's a tremendous 
uh, verse here in this uh, book of 1 Peter. First of all, number one, uh, there are four conditions to your bad days being good days. Bad days can be good days. Number one, first of all, in verse number 10, look what it says. First of all, be positive. He, for he that will love life and see good days. First of all, you need to be positive. You want to turn your bad days into good days. And what do we mean by being positive? You need to love life. Let's everybody say that. Love life. It's right there in the Word of God. Amen. As Christians, listen, folks, we ought to love life. Amen. We ought to love life. Now, what does it mean to love life? It means to see the best in every situation. You need to love life. You need to see the best in every situation. Some people, when they look at situations and things in their life, they only look at the bad stuff. You know what? And listen, there, there are situations every day we're going to have to deal with. But listen, folks, uh, we need to love life. I, I, I just love that. Love life. As Christians, we ought to love life. Life. We need to see the best in every situation. That means you need to have an attitude of faith. You're going to trust God. You're going to rely upon God. How many believe that God is a sovereign God? Say amen. amen. He is in control. That's what the word sovereignty means. God is in control of everything. We're going to trust in Him. We're going to have an attitude of faith, trusting God, knowing God is in control. God is in charge of everything. doesn't matter what situation comes in your life. We know that God understands it and God knows it. Amen? God knows all about those things. We need to have an attitude of faith. It's the opposite of a pessimistic attitude. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 17. The Bible says, Therefore I hated life. If I ask how many people know someone that hates life, probably everyone here would raise their hand. You know someone that hates life. Maybe even you. You hate life. What does the Bible say? We're to love life. Amen? Amen? Amen. You're to love life. But there are people that hate life. Solomon said this, Therefore I hated life. Life. That's what he said. Because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. That's when he got away from the Lord, right? That's when he's saying that. And by the way, you get away from the Lord, that's the way you'll feel. That's why you need to stay in touch with the Lord. Stay in tune with the Lord. Make sure your right, life is right with the Lord. Stay, uh, uh, stay in touch with God. Love life. You can decide. You can decide that you're just going to endure life. Some of you may have already decided that. You're just going to endure life. Life is a burden. You're just going to endure it. You're going to escape every chance you get. There are some people, life is a burden. They're just enduring it. They run every chance they get because that's the only time that they think that they can breathe. Or, my friend, you can love life. You can enjoy life. You can have an attitude of faith. And that's where we need to go. Amen? <laughs> Too many Christians, they don't enjoy life. A lot of people think, well, you go to church, you don't enjoy life. You, you have to miss out on all the fun. Listen, that's a, the funnest life is the Christian life. I enjoy life. Man, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I even enjoy pastoring the church. You know what? Pastors are quitting. You know, the average pastor only stays at a church for three years. The average pastor. The average assistant pastor stays less than a year. We've experienced that even here at our own church. They only spend a year. The average pastor only spends uh, leaves after three years. The average pastor of a church. I've been here for 40 years. Why? Because I enjoy life. Yesterday, I went to softball practice. You know, I, I enjoy going to softball practice. Some people might think it's in, in, to endure. I'm just glad that I can go out there again. My wife told me at the end of the softball season last year, she said, if you want to play, Gary, you can go ahead and play. So what do you think? I'm going to play. Right, that's a long story. <laughs> the 
why I had to quit playing, why I quit playing 25 years ago. And uh, it's a long story. I'm not going to go into that story today, but I'm just glad. You know, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. We ought to enjoy life. Enjoy every minute of it. Amen? I went fishing on Monday. Didn't catch one thing. <laughs> Nothing. I got shut out. I, kept, I said, I'm going to go back. I, I told my wife after lunch, I said, uh, we ate that. We, you know what? We ate at the salty dog. I, I think we ought to enjoy life. Amen? I didn't have the salty dog, but I had something else. Some people think that Christianity, oh, you're dead and you're, you know, sad. We ought to enjoy life. Amen? We ought to enjoy life. That's what he says, enjoy life. We need to be positive is what he's talking about. Be positive. Enjoy life. We ought to do that. Or you can moan and groan around, try to run away from everything. Or you can enjoy life. I'm for enjoying life while I'm here. Amen? Might as well enjoy. When the Lord's finished with me, He's finished with me. But let's enjoy it while we can. In other words, be positive. You can turn your bad days into good days by being positive. Amen? Just enjoy life. Get up in the morning and say, oh, man, I got to get up again. You ought to jump out of bed and say, man, I got to get up again. Amen. Praise the Lord. I had so much stuff to do yesterday. I got up at 3.30 yesterday morning. And I said, oh, man, I'm, I, was, I was awake at 3.30. And you know what? I said, man, I got so much to do today. I'm excited about it. I could not lay there any longer. <laughs> I got up. I got up. I said, and I went in, read the Bible. Pray for every one of you. And uh, after I got done, and stuff, went over all my sermons, went out and ran a couple miles, then went and, and uh, took a golf lesson, then I went and played softball, and then I went home and did some more work. Made, I, I started off making pancakes for my wife yesterday morning too, yeah. You know what? We ought to be excited, amen? What's wrong? Come on, get excited. Hey, go out with a flame. You're going to go out. Amen. <laughs> Enjoy life. Some of you look like you've been sucking on prunes today. <laughs> My wife's got some of those in the pantry. I, I, I go in there and I said, what in the world are those things? They're prunes. I said, I'm not touching those things. <laughs> Enjoy life. I like the story of the little boy. Just a wee little boy, and he's out in California. And he's out there, and he's going door to door, and he's selling these pictures, pictures of, of, uh, of, of uh, you know, trees and different uh, landscapes and all kinds of stuff like that. And he was selling them for a dollar a piece, these little pictures. And uh, he went up to the first door, and the man said, he said to the man, would you buy one of these pictures? I'm selling them for a dollar a piece. He said, well, what, what are you going to do with the money? He said, well, I'm raising money uh, for fire relief from all, you know, all the places that burn there. He says, or people lost their houses and they lost everything. So I'm, I'm going to use the money. I'm going to give the money to those people for fire relief. He, and the man said to the little boy, just a little boy, selling these pictures for a dollar apiece. He said, well, how much money are you going to raise? He said, a million dollars. <laughs> He said, are you doing it all by yourself? He said, oh, no, I got another little boy helping me. <laughs> hey, oh, man, like that kid's positive. I like that little guy, amen? <laughs> I like him. Love life. You ought to underline that in your Bible, amen? Love life. First of all, turn your bad days into good days. Your bad days can be good days by, first of all, being positive. Love life. Then notice number two. Look at verse 10 again. Be quiet. <laughs> yeah, well, look what it says. Verse number 10, the second part of verse number 10. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Be quiet. If you want to turn your bad days into good days, you need to be quiet. He says... 
Let him refrain his tongue, speak no guile. What is it talking about? You want to turn your bad days into good days, you need to be quiet. Get rid of the guile out of your mouth. Uh, refrain your tongue from evil, the Bible says. What's it talking about? Stop your complaining. You need to be quiet. You need to stop your complaining. Stop your griping. That never helps anything. It doesn't help you. It doesn't help anybody else. You need to be quiet. Griping and complaining. You, you start your griping and complaining. You do it all day long. It's a bad day. Something happens, and you start your griping and complaining, and all day long you're stuck on your griping and complaining, and you wonder how come you're having a bad day. Just be quiet. How many love to hear griping and complaining? Let me see your hands. Do you see that? No one here likes to hear griping and complaining. Then why in the world do you tell everybody? You go to someone and the first thing out of your mouth is griping and complaining. I've seen it right here at the church. Standing out there in the foyer, someone comes in and they got something to gripe or complain about. Now, you're going to watch it for a couple of weeks anyway. <laughs> but you know what? Just be quiet. You're not helping yourself. You're not making your day any better. Does it make you feel better griping and complaining? It doesn't. You might as well stop. Stop your griping and complaining. Be quiet. Just be quiet. Psalm 141 and verse 3. Look what the psalmist said. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. No one wants to hear your griping and complaining. If you, if you have to tell it to someone, tell it to the Lord. Tell it to the Lord. Get it out of your system. But don't tell it to anyone else. It's not going to improve your day. It's not going to help you. Just be quiet. It's not going to help your marriage. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. You want to make your bad day a good day? Be quiet. I would say something else. Just be quiet. The country boy's walking down the road, country road with his, uh, with his girlfriend. The moon was full. The stars were out. It was just a beautiful evening is very romantic they're walking along the young country boy got caught up in the romance of the evening he looked over at her and said I love you I want to marry you will you marry me without any hesitation she said yes sir then they walked for the longest time. Didn't say anything. Finally, she said, well, aren't you going to say anything? He said, I think I already said too much. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we just need to be quiet, amen? Just be quiet. Turn your bad days into good days. Be positive. You need to love life. Love life. Some of you need to start loving life. You need to love life. Then you need to be quiet. Refrain your tongue from evil. Speak no guile, the Bible says. Then number three, be good. Pretty easy. This is a pretty easy outline. Be good. Look at verse 11. Let him eschew evil and do good. You want to turn your bad days into good days, you need to be good. That word askew means to avoid. Avoid evil. Let him askew evil and do good. Avoid evil. In other words, you need to run from evil. You need to do good. This is what happens. 
what he's talking about here is trouble comes into our lives. Listen to me for a moment. Trouble comes into our lives. Here we are, we're serving the Lord, we're trying to do right. And problems will come into our lives. We all have problems, understand this. Trouble comes to all of us. But sometimes the trouble comes and the problems come and we uh, get upset and we say, here I am trying to serve God, trying to do right, trying to live for the Lord. Here I am, I'm giving, I'm going to church, I'm trying to serve God and trouble comes. What's the use? What's the use? And that's what he's saying. When he says do good, it's in the continuous form. Keep doing good. Don't go back. We see it happen all the time. I saw it happen this year. This last year, I can name names. Of people that once were sitting in these seats and trouble came into their life. And you know what? They said, well, here I am trying to do right. Troubles come into my life. And they just quit. They just quit coming to church. Quit serving the Lord. They said, what's the use? And I can, you want me to give you the names? I'm not going to. They used to sit right next to you. That's why he says, do good, amen? Keep doing good. Don't you quit. God knows what's going on. I like what old Bob Jones said. Remember what Bob Jones said? Do right, do right, do right till the stars fall. Do right. Keep doing right. You do good. Keep on doing good. Don't go back. Keep doing good. People say, well, what's the use? And they give up. They throw in the towel. Turn your bad days into good days. Keep doing good. Amen? Just keep doing it. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. You just do good. Just keep doing good. A fellow is going to buy some life insurance. And he found out that your family's health history is important when you're going to buy life insurance. So the insurance agent came. Brother George is back there. He'll sell you some life insurance. He's back there working. He'll sell you some life insurance. Called the insurance agent in. The insurance agent came in. First question he asked is, what age did your father die? He said, my father died at 49 years old. He said, well, what did he die of? He said, he died of a heart attack. He said, oh. The insurance agent said, oh. He said, how about your mother? Uh, uh, at what age did she die? He said, my mother died at age 42. And he said, what did she die of? He said, she died of cancer. He goes, oh. He said, well, you know, uh, this is probably not going to work out with this insur life insurance. He said, it's going to be pretty expensive for you to get some life insurance. And, uh, and the fellow said, okay. And so he called another agent up. He had learned his lesson. And so the next agent came, and he asked the same questions. He said, okay, what age did your dad die? He said, my dad died at 96. He said, well, what did he die of? He said, he fell off a horse while he's playing polo. <laughs> he said, well, how about your mom? He said, she died at 92. He said, well, what did she die of? Childbirth. We have problems, and you know what? We decide we're going to quit. We're going to give it up. Turn your bad days into good days. Be positive. You need to love life, the Bible says. Turn your bad days into good days. You need to be quiet. Stop all the complaining. Stop, all, stop it all, the negative talk. Turn your bad days into good days. Be good. Just continue to do good, no matter what. Yeah, troubles are going to come. When they come, just keep doing good. You get out there in the traffic. The traffic is horrendous out there. Plan 
If you're going to go someplace, make sure you have plenty of time. So your, <laughs> so your blood pressure doesn't go up. When they run out in front of you, just forgive them, amen? Because that's about all you can do anyway. You might as well. Just forgive them. You're going to have a bad day if you don't. I mean, it's going to be a bad day. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. Just forgive them. Have, hey, I forgive you. That's what you have. have a good day, amen? You can turn your bad day into a good day. Be good. One more thing. Be peaceful. Look at verses 11 and 12. Last part of verse 11 and verse 12. Let him speak. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Verse 12, the Bible says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Be peaceful. Look what it says. If you want to turn your bad days into good days, you need to be peaceful. You need to seek peace is what it says there. You know what it says? It says seek peace and ensue it. You know what the word ensue it means? It means to run after it. If you want to turn your bad days into good days, you need to seek peace and you need to run after it. Now, what does it mean to seek peace? peace. It means to seek peace with individuals. Seek peace with the Lord, but seek peace with individuals. Individuals, people will rob you of your joy, won't they? All they got to do, all I have to do is say something to you. Sometimes they don't even have to say anything to you. They can just look at you cross-eyed. As my mom said, did they look at you cross-eyed? And they will ruin your day. What you need to do is when they look at you that way or they say something to you that way, what, you know what it's saying? You need to seek peace with them. You say, well, you don't understand. Well, you don't know what they say. I, 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 I don't care. The Bible says that you need to be a peacemaker. It doesn't matter what they said. It doesn't matter what they did. You need to be a peacemaker. I'm going to quote that. I'm going to give you that, brother. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number, uh, verse number 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. You need to be seeking peace with individuals. Right here at Liberty Baptist Church. Listen, you need to be seeking peace with everyone in this church. Well, they don't want peace. It doesn't matter what they want. You are the one. He's talking to you to be the peacemaker. If they don't receive it, that's, that's up to them. But you seek peace. You need to be a peacemaker. You need to... Don't be a troublemaker. Be a peacemaker. There are too many troublemakers around. They're trying to make trouble. They're looking for trouble. They're looking for problems. Listen, quit looking for trouble. Quit looking for problems. Start looking for peace. Amen? Find peace with one another. Come into this place and find peace with one another. If you, if you can't come in here and you're trying to avoid someone, you know what? You're not doing right. You need to find peace. I go all over town. I've been here in this area for 46 years. In Sarasota, Bradenton. 46 years. There is nowhere I can go in Sarasota and Bradenton that I don't see someone that I know. I still look the same. People come up to me. They say, but... What are you laughing about? I think I look the same. I know I don't, but... But people do recognize me. This brother back here from Ohio, he said, I recognize you. Do you know what? Every place I go... Even people that used to go to our church and they don't go here any longer, I, I can go up to those people, shake their hand, pat them on the shoulder, and have a carry, a carry on a conversation with them, be kind with them. You know what? Everybody. Doesn't matter. You ought to be able to do the same thing. You need to be a peacemaker. I like it. A peacemaker, not a troublemaker. Amen? Let's be at peace with one another. That's what he's saying. You ought to go 
after people and make peace with them. Peace with people. Peace with God. Look for peace. You want to turn your bad days into good days? You start making peace with people. Someone calls you up, they say something. Breathe. And then you know what? Forgive them. Make peace. Years ago, I heard an evangelist tell a story about a lady that got bit by a mad dog. Uh, it's a dog, a mad dog. We used to call a mad dog a dog with rabies. She got bit by this mad dog, this dog with rabies, and she didn't go to the doctor in time, and so she got, they call it hydrophobia, is what you, a person gets. She went to the doctor, and the doctor said, it's too late. You're too late for the shots, because they give you those shots in the stomach, you know. He says, you're too late. He says, you need to write your will out. So she began to write and write and write and write. And the doctor said, that's an awful long will. She said, well, I'm not writing a will. I'm writing all the names of all those people I want to bite. <laughs> be peaceful. You need to be seeking peace. The Bible says, ensue it. Run after it. Run after peace. Be a peacemaker. Run after it. You can turn your bad days into good days. I thought, my, what a tremendous passage, amen? Turn our bad days into good days. Here it is. Four conditions there. And you know, these are things that we ought to be doing all the time anyway, amen? These are things that we should be doing all the time. Be positive, be quiet, be good, be peaceful. Turn your bad days into good days. You go from bad to worse to worst. We can learn from the dictionary. We can? Yes, we can. Because when you go to the dictionary, you go from bad to worse to worst. Between worse and worst is the word worship. When we have a bad day, then it gets worse, and then it goes, before it gets worst, you need to worship, amen? Let's worship the Lord. Let's do what God's told us to. Four conditions He's given to us right here to turn your bad days into good days. Let's bow our heads. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You can turn your bad days into good days. You say, you know what, Pastor, I need that. I need to turn my bad days into good days. I need to follow the conditions that are outlined here in the Word of God. Would you pray for me? I need to follow these Conditions here in the Word of God. I need to apply them to my life. Would you pray for me right now? Slip your hand up all through the building. I need your prayer. I need your help. Would you pray for me? Thank you very much. Hands all through the building. I'd say probably 90% of the people raise their hands. People are still raising their hands. Here it is right here. Simple little truth in the Word of God. Turn your bad days into good days. I, I, I like the very first one. Be positive. Love life. That right there, I thought to myself, that alone can change each one of us if we would simply start loving life, the life that God has given to us. What a love life that God has given unto us. If you forget everything else, I hope that you'll remember to love life. Mark it down in your Bible. You'd say today, you know, I know someone that their life is just nothing but trouble and problems and difficulties. And I'm going to pray for them. Would you pray with me, Pastor? Slip your hand up. It's all through the building. I'm going to pray for them. Would you pray with me? Thank you very much. That means that you're thinking about other people. That's good. You pray for them. Share this outline from this passage. Say, here, this is how you can change your bad days to good days. But first of all, it must 
began by trusting Jesus Christ as our Savior. These truths that we've given to you are for the believer. They're for Christians. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, my friend, you're just going to continue to have, it'll be hard to turn those bad days into good days if you don't know Christ as your Savior. You need Christ as your Savior. Can I convince you to trust in Christ as your Savior? Can I show you from the Word of God how you can be saved? Would you say today, you know what, I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure I'm on my way to heaven, and I would like to know for sure that I'm on my way to heaven because that's how you're going to start turning your bad days into good days. See, I would like to know for sure that I'm on my way to heaven. Would you just slip your hand up and put it back down? Anyone? I'd like to know that. Thank you. I'd like to know that. Thank you. I'd like to know that. Anyone else? I'd like to know that, how I can be saved. Anyone else? I'd like to know for sure that I'm saved. In just a moment, I'm going to have what we call an invitation around here. We give people an opportunity to come so that we can show them how to be saved. Now, everyone's head is bowed and every eye is closed, but if you raised your hand a moment ago and you said, I'd like to know how to be saved, I'd like to know that for sure, just look at me right now. If you'd like to know for sure that you're saved and on your way to heaven, if you raised your hand a moment ago, just look at me right now, would you? Listen. In just a moment, we're going to give an invitation, and you can come, and we'll show you from the Bible how you can be saved. If you'll come, we'll show you how you can be saved. Would you come? We're going to pray. I'm going to have a word of prayer. Then we're going to have an invitation. And while we have that invitation, we're going to give you the opportunity to come, and I'll meet you right here in the front where you can come, and we'll take the Bible and show you how you can be saved. Dear Lord, thank you for speaking to hearts here today. Thank you for each one. Dear Lord, there's probably folks here this morning that are having a bad day, but Father, that bad day can be turned into a good day. And I pray that it would. Help the people to take these principles, these conditions that are outlined here in the Word of God, apply them to their lives every single day. Turn in those bad days into good days. And dear Lord, there are some here today, they raised their hand, they said they've got some friends, they've got some people they know, their, their lives are just nothing but misery. Help them, Father, to be able to show them from the Word of God how those bad days can be turned into good days. And then, dear Lord, there are some here today, they don't know Christ as their Savior. They're not on their way to heaven. They don't know for sure. And they're, they're not going to have good days until they come to know Christ as their Savior. Help them to come to know Christ as their Savior even this very hour. Help them to come when we give the invitation. Now I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand to your feet. God spoke in your heart. Why don't you come right now as we begin to sing? Why don't you start today by turning those bad days into good days? Why don't you come right now?